Chapter 6 Pea Soup Henry led Jack and Annie out of the sea lab, locking the door behind them. Then he led the way through the hall and down another flight of steep steps. In the faint light of the lower deck, Jack saw naval officers and scientists streaming through a door ahead. He, Annie, and Henry lined up behind them and filed, filed into the wardroom. Still wearing their bulky life vests, Jack and Annie sat awkwardly on a long bench in front of a table. Many of the men stared at them with curiosity. The professor smiled, but the captain did not look happy. "'I thought our friends might join us for lunch, sir,' Henry said to the captain. "'I promise they will return to shore after the storm.' "'Very well,' said the captain. "'Immediately after the storm.' "'Aye, aye, sir,' said Henry. He turned to the other officers at the table. "'Gentlemen, may I introduce Annie and Jack from America. "'They are adventurous travelers. "'Hi,' murmured Jack and Annie. "'The officers and scientists nodded politely. "'Sailors in white uniforms acted as waiters, "'bringing plates and cups to the table. "'What are we having for lunch?' Annie whispered to Henry. "'The usual,' said Henry, sighing. "'Salted meat, pickles, dried biscuits.' "'This is not good,' thought Jack. He was right. When he was served, he could hardly look at his food, much less eat it. He was thirsty, though, so he reached for his cup and took a long sip of water. Jack immediately spit the liquid back into his cup. It was unbelievably sour. He gagged and coughed. When he looked up, everyone was staring at him, including the captain. Excuse me, Jack said, wiping his mouth. His face felt hot from embarrassment. You just guzzled your lime juice, lad, said the professor. Most of us take it in small sips. Lime juice? asked Annie. Why? It prevents scurvy, said the professor. Every day we all drink a cup of lime juice for vitamin C. Otherwise we'd get sores and rotten teeth. Yuck, said Annie. Henry smiled. You won't get scurvy if you eat fruits and vegetables, he said. But it is hard to keep vegetables and fruits fresh on board a ship. Jack couldn't think about eating or drinking anything at the moment. All of it, especially the pickles, made him feel even queasier. The rolling of the ship didn't help either. The waves seem to be getting worse, he said to Henry. Mm, they do indeed, said Henry. He turned and looked out a small round window. Can't see a thing. It's as thick as pea soup out there. Oh no, Jack groaned to himself. Please don't talk about pea soup. The ship lurched. Cups and plates slid across the table and crashed to the floor. Annie grabbed Jack as the ship rocked wildly. Steady as she goes, said the captain. Seems the storm is fully upon us, said the professor. The ship lurched again. More cups and plates slid off the table. Jack and Annie almost slid off their chairs. But without any sign of nervousness, the officers and scientists stood up and hurried out of the room as if they knew just what to do in bad weather. "'I'll take you down to the hold,' Henry said to Jack and Annie. "'We'll wait there until the waves calm down.' The ship pitched violently as they stood up from the table. Holding on to the back of their life vests, Henry steered Jack and Annie out of the wardroom. Jack nearly slipped on the wet floor. His bare feet crushed some soggy biscuits and pickles. He tried not to think about it. Out in the dark hall, the wind howled down the stairwell from the top deck, spraying them all with ocean foam. Must go secure my lab, Henry shouted to Jack and Annie. He pointed to the stairs. Go down one more flight. I'll join you when I can. We'll come with you, said Annie. Tis better to be safe, said Henry. Follow the others, quickly. I'll come soon. Henry unlocked the door to his lab and disappeared inside. Come on, let's go down, said Jack. He grabbed Annie's hand and pulled her toward the stairwell. Officers and sailors were all heading down the steps ahead of them. Just as Jack and Annie started down, the ship lurched again. Jack's stomach lurched with it. He covered his mouth. I am definitely going to be sick, he thought. He really didn't want to throw up on the stairs or in front of the captain and the others. You go down. I'll be right there, Jack shouted to Annie. Why, where are you going? Annie yelled. Just go down, said Jack. Then he whirled around and charged up two flights of steep steps to the top deck. 
When Jack stepped onto the deck, the rain was pounding, the wind was howling, the waves looked like dark mountains. Sea foam was blowing everywhere. Jack knew at once he'd made a mistake. Better to be embarrassed than drown, he thought. Just as he turned to go back down the steps, Andy burst onto the deck. Jack, she cried, what are you doing? Jack forgot all about throwing up. I made a mistake, he shouted. We shouldn't be up here. Go down, I'm coming with you. We have to go back down. He pushed Annie toward the stairwell. A giant wave crashed over the side of the ship. Jack fell and slid across the foam-covered deck. It was impossible to see anything. The wind was screaming. Jack tried to stand, but wearing his clumsy life vest, he couldn't get back on his feet. Jack finally hauled himself up. But just as he did, another giant wave broke over the side of the ship. The ship rolled again, and Jack fell to his knees. Another wave crashed over the deck. Jack was swept up by the foamy water and tossed overboard into the churning sea.